Hey guys, Julian here. Today I'm going to be showing you some tips on how to make respaces. So, to start off with, what is a respace? There's sort of like two different styles of respaces I've found. So, the first one is pretty simple. And all it is is two or more saw waves detuned with a low pass filter on it. This is like the style that you hear in like a lot of like flume tracks. A lot of deep house tracks use this. A lot of like old school drum and bass and new school stuff as well. This is just like a very simple sound that sounds really good and you can use a lot in your tracks. The other style of race bass is the more like sound design heavy ones like Noisia and like more like Neurofunk type producers use. And those are usually based on the same concept, just two saw waves detuned. But there's a lot more filtering and distortion and processing that goes into them to make those kind of sounds that is a lot more sort of sound design intensive I guess. So I'll cut I'll touch on that a little bit, but to start off with, let's just go over like the very simple respace. So there's sort of two ways that you can make one of these simple respaces. The first way is you take two oscillators, detune the second one a little bit, and then put a low pass filter on them and you get this. So you can hear it's very subby, it's very warm, it's kind of dark, it's a very pleasing sound, and it's almost kind of like a sub, like just a sine wave, but what you get is this movement that's caused by the detuned oscillators that is a lot sort of nicer, and just sounds a little bit better to me. In my tracks a lot, I'll typically use one of these basses and then like use it as a sub because I think it just sounds a little bit better. And what's going on here, the reason why this motion is happening is because these two oscillators are playing at very similar speeds, but they're not, because this one's detuned, it's moving a little bit faster. So the phases are lining up and then they're like going out and then they're lining back up and then they're going out of like out of sync with each other. And they just keep doing that very quickly. And that's how you get that movement. And basically, the higher you turn this up, the more of it you get. And then the lower, the less you get. Um, so this is pretty solid, but there's actually a little bit easier way to make them that sounds a bit better. And that is to turn off oscillator B. Just use one oscillator. Use a bunch of unison. I'm just going to go up to 16 voices. And then put a low pass filter on that. And you get this. So, I like using this sound a little bit more than that previous way I showed you to do it. Because it's a lot wider. It feels nicer. It just sounds like a much higher quality sound in general to me. So, those are pretty much like the really simple reasons. Now, if you want to take it a step further and do a little bit more complex kind of sound design e respaces, I'll show you some tricks. So I'm gonna actually go back to just two oscillators detuned with only one voice. Because when you start distorting these and doing a lot of filtering on them that isn't just a low pass, you kind of want this just very mono sound going into it. So I'm gonna go to the effects tab. I'm gonna grab an EQ and the first thing I'm gonna do is a notch filter. So I could do this with the filter, but it's just a little bit easier with the EQ for me because it's more visual. So what a notch filter is is as it sounds literally just a notch that you take out of the frequency content, I guess, at whatever point you specify. So you can hear what that does is it, it makes it kind of like it kind of like scoops out a lot of this low mid and just gives us the like from the mids like the upper mids to the high end and then the low end. So this is a pretty desirable sound and it gets better when you distort it too. I'm going to put the distortion after the EQ for this thing. But you see when we start distorting it we get a lot more harmonic content on top of it, and it gets a lot more aggressive. And that's really what you want. And you can experiment with different distortion types. Maybe I'll do like the sine.
But yeah, and the thing about this style of Reese is that there's sort of like infinite sounds to be had as well because you can do so many different things and there's so many different ways that you can like affect this that you can really have like infinite, infinite sounds. So you can do like some filtering on top of that. Maybe I'll do like a bandpass filter might sound good. Like around there it sounds kind of good I guess. I mean, you can experiment but this is pretty much sort of the template is like if you want to make these harder ones is to start, just get the two oscillators and then just go crazy with the effects. That's really where it lies. It's not so much about like having some kind of super cool wavetable or anything. It's really just about getting the basic sound and then just like I said going wild with the effects. And that's going to be it for today, guys. I hope you learned something from this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, in the comments, like this video, subscribe, share the video if you feel so compelled. Check out my sample packs, and I will see you guys again tomorrow for another tutorial.